Hey everybody, today we are looking at 4-4, four, four, which is congruent triangles. Okay, so when we talk about congruent figures, if figures are congruent, they have the same size and the same shape. So any congruent figures, we've talked about what congruent means, congruent is same size, same shape. Um, corresponding angles and corresponding sides are going to be the sides that match up. Um, so they are the same side in the two triangles or the same angle in the two triangles. Um, if our polygons are congruent, okay, that means all their corresponding sides are congruent and all the corresponding angles are congruent. And we'll look at that a little more in a little bit. Um, so any triangles that are the same size, same shape, they're congruent. One thing that I want to talk about real quick is naming polygons. Um, whenever we name polygons, you can pick any vertice that you want to start at. So if I start at P, I can go PQRS or PSRQ. I can go and start with any vertice and go in any direction. So I could do QPSR or QRSP. What I cannot do is crossed through the middle. I cannot say QSRP and end up crisscrossing through my figure. You wanna pick a vertice and go around the outside of your shape, either clockwise or counterclockwise, it's not gonna matter. Just don't crisscross through your shape. Okay, because the reason for that is when we do that, we have congruent statements. This right here and this right here is a congruent statement which is already on your notes for you. Okay, um, what that means, like if I say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, angle A is the first letter here. Angle D is the first letter here. They match their position, so they are corresponding angles. That means angles A and D are going to be congruent. Okay, if I look in the middle letter and the middle letter, it's B and E. Those angles are going to be corresponding angles. They're going to match up in the triangle, and they are going to be congruent. And then I look at the last letter C and the last letter F. Those are going to be congruent. Same thing with sides. If I look at the first two sides, I have side AB. That's this side here. The first two letters here are DE. So these two sides are going to be corresponding, and they're going to match up. Then I look at the next two letters, B, C, and E, F. Those are going to be my corresponding sides. They are going to be congruent. And then my first and last, so A, C, and D, F. Those two are going to be corresponding sides, and they will be congruent. The same thing is true. It doesn't matter how many letters you have or how many sides you have in your figure. It always is going to work that way. So when you write your congruent statements, it is very, very, very important that you are paying attention to the order of your letters because the order of your letters matter because they are matching up which pieces and parts are corresponding. So like if I were to look here, here's PQ, then QR, then RS, then I would do PS. Those are the four sides. Okay, so you do the two that are right next to each other and then the first and last one is going to wrap that around for you. So if you have questions on that, go ahead and write them down now. Okay, so what we're looking at here is with example one, I want to name the congruent and corresponding parts. So I'm told that triangle RST is congruent to triangle XYZ. Okay, I have pictures here, but I do not even need them. The only thing I need is this right here. Okay, so I'm going to say and start with angle R. Angle R is the first letter. The first letter over here is X. So angle R is going to be congruent to angle X. The second letter is S. The second letter is Y. So angle S is going to be congruent to angle Y. And then my last letter is T. My last letter is Z. So angle T is going to be congruent to angle Z. Okay, then I'm going to look at my sides. My first two letters here are RS, so that's where I'm going to start. And it's going to be congruent to the first two letters over here, which is XY. Okay, then my next set is my next two letters is ST. Um, ignore the announcement that's happening right now. Okay, so ST is the last two letters. YZ is the last two letters, so it's going to be congruent to YZ. 
Then we have to wrap it around. So the first and last letters, so we do RT. Okay, and it is gonna be congruent to the first and last letters here, which is XZ. Okay, so hopefully you see here why the order of your letters is super important. It makes a difference as to whether or not, um, or which angles are congruent. Okay, so you wanna match up those corresponding and congruent angles. Okay, so if you have questions on that, go ahead and write it down. And let's go ahead and take a look at example two. With example two, we're told that these two triangles here, um, EFH and GFH are congruent. We want to do two things, find the value of X and then find the measure of angle GFH, which is this angle up here, okay? So if I wanna find the measure of angle X, I know that from here, the measure of angles H and H, okay? So that's one H and the other H here. So it's FHE and FHG, those are my two angles. These are gonna be congruent, so that means this is also a right angle. So I'm gonna set 6x minus 12 equal to 90. I'm gonna add 12 to both sides, and I'm gonna get that 6x is equal to 102. Okay, from here I'm gonna divide both sides by six, and I'm gonna get that x is equal to 17. Okay, so now the next thing that I wanna do is find the measure of angle GFH. Well, if I find that I know this angle E, okay, because here's E, is gonna be congruent to G. So these are congruent here. So I know that this is 21.6 degrees. Well, now if I look at this triangle, I know that all three of those angles are gonna add to 180. So I can say, that the measure of angle GFH plus 21.6 plus 90 is gonna be equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so I'm gonna combine like terms. I have the measure of angle GFH plus 111.6 degrees equals 180. From here, I'm gonna subtract 111.6 from both sides, and I'm gonna get that the measure of angle GFH is 68.4 degrees. So this is my answer for part B, and this is my answer for part A. Okay, please know that this angle here is also 68.4 degrees because they're going to be equal because those triangles are congruent. Okay, questions on that? Go ahead and write it down. And now we move into what I know is your absolute favorite. We are moving into proofs. Okay, so here's the deal. Whenever we're doing proofs with this chapter, we are trying to prove that my triangles here are congruent. Whenever you're doing proofs for this chapter, Every time you are given something or you figure out how to prove something, I want you to mark it on your picture if it's not already there, okay? So for example, we have PQ is congruent to MN. That's marked here, PQ is congruent to MN. We have marked that QR is congruent to RN. That's, or that's marked, okay? We have marked that these are right angles and we're trying to show that our triangles are congruent. In order to show that our triangles are congruent, at least for today, you have to show that every pair of angles are congruent and every single pair of sides are congruent, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look. We have that P and M are right angles, okay? We talked about this in class the other day that remember that when we have right angles, our right angle congruence theorem says that they are congruent. So you can either write for your reason right angle congruence theorem. I just like to write what it says, which is all right angles are congruent. You can feel free to write whichever one you want. Okay, so I abbreviate R right as RT and I use the symbol for angles and congruent. The next thing that we have is angle PRQ is congruent to angle MRN. So let's take a look. PRQ is here and MRN is here. So what kinds of angles are these? 
right? Hopefully you are recognizing that these are vertical angles. And remember, vertical angles are congruent. So we are going to write vertical angles either theorem or we're going to write R congruent. Either or, either one of these is fine. The vertical angles theorem says vertical angles are congruent or you can write vertical angles are congruent. All right. Now, this is what we talked about in class two days ago. Um, we have that this angle is congruent to this angle, that these angles are congruent, which means automatically that my other two angles are congruent. That's our third angles theorem. So again, we're going to abbreviate that with third angles theorem. All right, next thing we're told is R is the midpoint of PM. Okay, what does it mean to be a midpoint? Okay, remember that if this is the middle, that means that this side here is going to be congruent to this side here. That is our definition of a midpoint. Because that's what it means to be a midpoint. Then we have the last two sides are congruent. So before we can finish, look, we have we should have three pairs of angles are congruent. So here's one pair, two pair, three pair. Then we should have all three pairs of sides are congruent. So we have one pair, two pair, three pair. Okay, so that's going to be important is that when you're doing your proofs with this section, you want to show three pairs of angles are congruent, three pairs of sides are congruent. If we have that, then we know that our triangles are congruent by the definition of congruent figures or polygons or triangles, whatever you want to put, but you want to have figures or of some sort there because it's not the definition of congruence, it's the definition of congruent figures, meaning that they have all pairs of sides congruent and all pairs of angles congruent. Okay, so if you have questions on that, go ahead and write that down now. All right. Again, looking at another proof here, because I know they're your favorite. All right, we're told that segment AD bisects segment BE, and segment BE also bisects segment AD. Then we're told that AB is congruent to DE, that is marked, and we're told that angles A and D are congruent, and that is also marked. We can't mark a bisect yet, because that's just we're just being told that they bisect, so we don't know what that's coming from. So notice that when we start our proof, okay, we're starting with angles. Again, our goal to prove the triangles are congruent is to show that all three pairs of angles are congruent and all three pairs of sides are congruent. So when we look here, we have BCA, which is this angle here, is congruent to DCE, which is this angle here. Again, you should recognize that these are vertical angles and our vertical angles theorem gives us those are congruent. So vertical angles theorem is going to be a popular reason in this chapter when we're doing our proofs, as is this next step, which is our third angles theorem. Because again, we have that two pairs of angles are congruent, so the third ones must automatically be congruent. So again, notice how I'm marking these as I go through the steps. That is something that I want you to do as you're going through. It'll be even more important as we move into the next couple of lessons. All right, so the next thing we're looking at is we're given that these sides are congruent and we're given that these two sides bisect each other. So the question is what does it mean to bisect? Okay. Remember, bisect is the same thing as what a midpoint is. It cuts it in half. So I know that this is going to be congruent to this because that's what a bisector is. So AC is congruent to CD. Also, I know that these two are going to be congruent here. So I know that BC is going to be congruent to EC. Again, because that's what it means to be a bisector. So I'm using the definition of a bisector. Okay, then I have my triangles are congruent, again, by definition of congruent triangles or congruent polygons or congruent figures, whatever the case may be. So if you have questions on this, go ahead and write it down and we will go over them in class. Have a wonderful day, guys, and I will see you tomorrow.